I wanted to share something very quickly. It doesn't need to take very long that I found the, the hard way about sharing stuff. Um, Trent talked about avoiding sharing screens. There is some wisdom in a bit and sharing screens makes uh, video calls much less personal, but there are things that are worth sharing digitally. So I'm just doing a little experiment, uh, sharing a GeoGebra window, uh, but I'm not doing it by sharing a screen. And this is something I found the hard way. If you share a screen in most video uh, meeting apps, you do get jerky video. That's essentially just to reduce bandwidth because it's trying to stream a, a high res screen, not a little webcam. But if you use a mixing piece of software to maybe screen capture my GeoGebra window and then sort of you can see I've pasted in two different cameras as thumbnails you can do whatever you like then actually the crucial thing is you get much smoother animations and if you're doing something which relies on animations this is a meant to be some disease modeling thing um, the point is it moves less jerkily and that's a big deal if you need the smoothness so that's something I found the hard way and uh, really pleased that I can find a way of sharing a screen smoothly that really helped me uh, I should also say that if you want to write maths as well um, then writing smoothly helps so this is me writing mathematics on a surface pro tablet and I'm using OneNote and then capturing the OneNote screen and sending it to my mixing software the fact that I'm doing on a different computer and sending it over to another computer is making it unnecessarily extremely complicated, but it still works and I can scroll around the screen and actually do maths. And that, that feels actually quite a nicely organic way uh, of writing maths. And I was trying to integrate this thing. But the point is you can write, uh, and trying to write and do maths at the same time, is that even right? Yeah. I mean, writing and thinking are the two main skills of a mathematician, right? I don't know. Dangerous. <laughs> if you can't do them both at the same time, then, you know, I, for the record, can't do them both at the same time. Um, so speaking of uh, sharing writing, so I've got my uh, set up here where I have, uh, this is literally just a chair in my house. Uh, so my setup here is that I've got a, a standing desk, so I don't actually have a proper table. I imagine if you're a normal person, you might have an actual table that you can put a piece of paper nearby on. Uh, but instead, I've got a chair here and this has got a webcam clipped to the top of it. Um, and I've used this a few times in lectures when I've been going through uh, some maths with people. I found that having a big chunky pen helps. Uh, genuinely couldn't think of any maths to write, but I'm writing maths on there. Um, and that's something that people can kind of see and watch. I've also got my self inset there just so that people can still see uh, my face and see what I'm saying. Um, and is that the ManyCam software you're using, Katie? Yeah, this is using ManyCam. I'm going to face it, I'm going to show you these things and then I'm going to try and screen share ManyCam, which is the most meta thing I could possibly do. <laughs> um, but it lets you mix various different inputs. It lets you have that, you know, you can resize and move this thing around. Um, I can also uh, screen share windows into this. So I've got a PowerPoint presentation here, uh, which I'm screen sharing as well. And I've also put the video overlay on that so that I can click through uh, a PowerPoint presentation, um, you know, while I'm talking about stuff. And I can always switch back to uh, myself talking if I need to kind of, you know, if I need to not have people be staring at my slides. Um, and I think I've sort of thought about this, that actually if you are talking through something that is, uh, in terms of accessibility, like if you're talking about something that is just some information, like if what you're communicating is, you know, some maths or some definitions or whatever, having the words written down on the screen may actually be useful for some people in terms of accessibility. Um, so this, this idea of video fatigue, uh, it's not just the fact that you're constantly looking at screens, it's also um, because of the way the video comes through. Uh, you can sometimes find that your brain is having to do quite a lot of work in terms of filling in gaps in the audio and kind of connecting together jerky video. Your brain actually does that for you and it can be really tiring. So if when someone says something, that text also appears on the screen, maybe that will help people a little bit with not just cementing information in a sort of pedagogical way, but also not having to try and process it quite as hard. Um, but obviously don't just put a massive wall of text up, you know, do it in the, in the sensible way where just like one line appears at a time. The main thing I'm thinking of here is online video quizzes, basically. <laughs> um, you know, like if, you're, if you're reading out questions, maybe put the questions on the screen and then people can hear and see it and process it at the same time and that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, th this is, there are probably opinions about this. Uh, but anyway, I will just quickly, uh, before I stop talking, sh uh, share what I'm doing here with ManyCam. Uh, so this is my uh, bit of software that I've been using for this. Um, you can see, this is all very meta, uh, but you can see it's got these options here and I can either just cut directly to something else or I can do a nice transition that does a fade. Um, I can specify what my different setups are here. I can add new layers. So this has got an input from my iPad. Um, incidentally, if anyone's wondering, this is my IP camera. So this is literally just an iPad. 
uh, which I can show you by putting the iPad in front of, it's so meta, uh, but this is just taking the input from this iPad camera, oh, it's upside down sometimes, uh, and porting it to an IP address. So at the bottom of the screen here, uh, it's giving an IP address that you can probably just about make out, which anyone who's on the same home Wi-Fi network as me uh, can type into a browser and access this video feed. So I can give that IP address to ManyCam and tell it, look here for a video feed, and that works as an input as well. Um, and you can also put a password on that video feed so it's not just available to anyone who's on the same Wi-Fi network as you. Uh, and who knows? I mean, I'm at home, but who knows what my neighbours are up to? Uh, so that's, uh, that's a couple of the things that I've got set up here anyway. Can I also just picking up on what Katie said about... Um like fatigue and you know people trying to pick up what you're saying that's another good advantage of doing stuff through a mixer rather than zoom is as far as i know with zoom you can't control really what things look like it sizes everyone equally it works everything out if you're going through some sort of mixing software and you know that you're going into a person that's going to talk a lot you can put them front and center you can make other people smaller down the side you can basically live photoshop and move people's attention where you need it to be so people aren't constantly looking for a little yellow circle around a person going oh hang on who's talking now what am i meant to be listening to you can move their attention where you need it to be i think that's a really important point when you have no control over the other end there are there's some caveats as well though if so my a lot of my work is visiting schools and pr presentations and I, if i have to do that online i have no control about if they want to use uh, teams that's a really popular thing in schools now uh, skype uh, zoom google meet whatever and some of those will let me share screens some of them will but i haven't got permission because i'm a guest so i can't share a screen or things like that and if you use a mixing software then you can send whatever you like over your webcam with some possible exception of zoom and a mac uh, virtual webcams but then for example so even if I couldn't share a screen I could send still my uh, my OneNote text writing thing as my webcam or my Jojo profile but you still can't control at the other end whether they have made that big enough to see whether they've clicked um, focus on that video if you can't make the thing spotlight so there's pros and cons but if you have mixing software available and you need to sort of dial into another end and you have no control over it mixing software will give you a lot more flexibility about what you can send even if you're not going to the stage of production that trent's doing of a of a large stream to possibly thousands of people there's there's also another slight issue uh, i put in the chat uh, about sharing your screen versus sharing via cam uh, which i didn't realize because what you are seeing uh, that you're sending to Zoom isn't actually what everyone else is seeing. So yes. if I run my slides through my Ecamm Live, they will be a little bit blurry, and that's because it's pulling it in as a virtual cam. Yep. Whereas if you share directly through Zoom, the image will be sharper. So there's, there's trade-offs. Because what I really want is a sharp image it's through my smooth, virtual cam, yeah. but it's a trade-off. Do you want sharp image it or do you want overlays? Yeah. And I had the same thing with GeoGebra animations. I need them to be smooth to get the effect of the animation. Otherwise, there's no point. But if I share them via the OBS thing, the downside exactly, as Jamie's saying, is I lose resolution because it's trying to process it as a camera and keep bandwidth going. Whereas sharing a screen, you get crystal uh, sharp images quite often, but they still the frame rate has gone down to sort of one a second if you're lucky. And um, so I don't know if anyone has any more experience of IP, IP cameras than me and or this kind of stuff. I've literally just kind of taught myself this in the last couple of weeks. Um, so I've had a question that if you're using something like uh, OneNote or on a tablet, is there a way to transmit that to an IP address to use as an input? Uh, or is it easier to just connect the, the tablet with a cable, I guess, might be? The I think sending a, s a screen of a laptop to an IP address is hard. I'm sure it could be done, mm -hmm. but it might need another bit of mixing software to send it. Um, and that starts to be more meta yeah, than anyone wants to get. I think if you've got something like an iPad, a cable from the iPad to the computer will allow it to be recognized as yeah. a video source. Is that correct? Or you could get a, a mirror on screen, which you could then capture in any mixing software. Yeah, this is all quite technical. I'm also going to say the word Chromecast. Chromecast is great. I'm smiling now, but that's a, that's a useful thing to get. Hey, I love it. Output from one device visible on another device, which I guess you could then screen share. Um, that's starting to sound a bit sellotaped together, but we'll, yeah. Um, I, think, I think it's the kind of thing where the more you play with it, the more you, you see what works. And I realize that for a lot of people, all of this tech is quite new and quite um, unfamiliar. Um, but I think 
I, I'm certainly I'm happy to chat with people about this kind of stuff and, and give people advice. We'll try and put as much as we can in the doc for uh, this kind of uh, question as well. Um, but yeah, there was a question I didn't tackle earlier from Tom Crawford. Is he still in the room? No, he went to and teach. Okay. I didn't see that in the chat. He actually, it's a, it's a, it's an important question to do with what Jamie said about cameras. He said he had a DSLR, he managed to rig it up and he couldn't see the quality being any better. And I'd actually like, because of what Jamie just mentioned, that you can't quite tell what other people see when you send it. Uh, the, the image you're seeing of me at the moment is from a DSLR. It's an old one, which is why occasionally it just turns off and you see a little progress bar going, waiting for device. It's got a 10 minute live view limit. Anyway, that's a DSLR. And if I transition to a, a Logitech webcam, you see a different image, which is much more wide angle. I'm curious, what do, you, what do you notice about the difference in image quality? Both of them are sending, in theory, an HD feed. Uh, and I'm going to spotlight your video and you could do that again. Okay, so you're currently looking at a, a Logitech uh, HD webcam sitting on top of my monitor. Hello. Uh, and you can obviously see slightly more mess in the background because I didn't quite angle that one right in advance. Lesson one of camera placement. And this is now a DSLR, uh, which is above my monitor on a little tripod. Any comments about the difference in images? I mean, I have to do funky things with the DSLR if I'm not careful about focusing it uh, on a piece of software so I could focus on other things or I could change the white balance. But stick some comments in the chat or on the mic. Yeah, I think the, the focal length is clearly different. Yeah. DSLR's obviously got. Uh, <laughs> This is my knowledge of camera words uh, coming up here, but it's only showing a short distance front to back. Where depth of field, got, yeah. Uh, depth of field, that's the one. Uh, all my camera words just disappeared for a second. Uh, but the depth of field feels different. Like the DSLR looks a lot. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's almost like the sort of blurred background thing you can do on Skype. Yeah. So depth of, I mean, a nice lens with a wide aperture and short depth mm -hmm. field looks nicer if, you, if you're on portrait-y things. But... Um, then you've got to get the focus right because otherwise you move back and I'm now out of focus. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know how well that comes across on webcam. That's the bit I can't see because I'm only seeing my end of it. Um, mm -hmm. Jamie, did you find any problems with that, uh, with using a DSLR? I mean, yours, yours was bought new and so plugs into a, a computer much better than mine does, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty clueless. Uh, mine autofocus is anyway, so I, I can see where it's focusing by looking up. Um, but it just, uh, I guess I can... I can switch cameras as well, um, I think, to this. So this is, this is my laptop cam, um, and this is my DSLR. So again, it's, it's the same kind of difference. You can see a whole load of stuff behind me. Um, the, the DSLR fo uh, has that kind of shallow focus thing, so you can see me, but background's slightly blurry. Uh, and, and for me, it's a little bit about what we kind of expect. So if you watch YouTube or streaming, this is kind of the standard image that people are seeing. Uh, and so they kind of think that's how it should look. Whether or not it's actually a much better quality or not, it's something about familiarity. And so I think that presenting this way, people think, oh, that kind of looks a little bit more professional um, than if it was the, the kind of standard webcam. How, how, hang on, is my mic on? It is. How technical nerdy do you want me to get on the camera looking? Trent, I want you to go full <laughs> out, but, but I'm not the only person in the room. So let me say, I'll try and stop you if I think we're losing the general ability to keep up. I'll what? be patronizing and judge that. <laughs> I think what Jamie said is probably the most important bit. People, if they're watching something that's meant to be a YouTube video, they expect something to look like a depth of field. They don't know why, but they think it's like if you show someone something in 60 frames, even though technically it's better, it breaks their brain and they want it in 25. But yeah. when you're actually streaming out, the quality of the image is only ever going to be as good as what you're sending, how fast you can send it through the broadband. So the number of pixels I see when you're on your webcam or your DSLR, the image quality is absolutely identical in terms of sharpness. So it's not going to make a difference, but because your background is slightly blurred, my brain thinks that looks better. It yeah. doesn't look better at all, but <laughs> the I illusion is maintained of, of professionalism. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you can, you can be filming it in 4k, but if you can't send it that fast through your broadband, it's all just about framing and focus and what lens you've got on the camera above and beyond yeah. anything else. The lens is the biggest thing and you can't change a yeah. lens on a webcam and you will get a wide yeah. angle lens because webcams work like that. Yeah. But if you wanted to have a sort of close up shot from a distance, then you need a long lens on your 
DSLR mm -hmm. and then you can but then we're into the worlds of photography and suddenly you realize why uh, yeah. people who film things are basically photographers that it's not quite the same thing yeah and also to say with uh, you're talking about losing quality and jerkiness like going through mixes rather than sharing screen and stuff through zoom I, there is a plugin that you can get for OBS that will transmit completely lossless video, completely lossless screen capturing, but you either need to have a home studio or have a pretty beefing kind of gaming rig because it eats a graphics card to bits, but you can do it. So I am going to put that a... on my business uh, uh, tax return as definitely buying a gaming rig for my business. Is, yeah. is now, <laughs> so if anyone just is a gamer, you can do it with a, a pretty beefy graphics card and a couple of plugins. I, I hey. guess sub, subject to the caveat of you can still only send it so fast and if people can't receive it, then the quality is lost. Sorry, Sam. I was going to say that um, before furlough, uh, I was planning lots of video type things and was getting very excited about it. But my I didn't have anything before lockdown so I didn't even have like a tripod or a selfie stick so I had to get all of those things so I've got I got myself a, a selfie stick to put my phone as a as a camera for recording stuff um, with a tripod on and a remote control and I found that really useful um, I got a microphone which works really well when you plug it into your phone as a mic but doesn't I get a lot of background noise when I plug it into my laptop so I've got these these headphones. These my brother bought me many years ago so that I could talk to my husband when on Xbox Live. And I literally never used them until lockdown. And I went, oh, turns out my laptop, if it ever had a mic, it no longer works. Um, so I've had to, but my, my purchases were around the 15, 20 quid mark. And the people that know what they're talking about at the RI were really helpful in in helping us set up with things like doing videos and stuff the first time if we hadn't done them but they had a look at the quality of the the video the quality of the sound and things and it was it was acceptable it was fine so you don't have to spend an awful lot of amount on this um zoe my the mic that i bought was about 20 quid on amazon um i'd done it after lockdown so the choice was limited but it wasn't expensive um, and it, it was fine. Um, the thing that we found is there's like a standard webcam that like me and Ben and several other people have all recommended to each other that we all enjoy using, which is the, uh, obviously the Logitech C920. Uh, Ben's showing his there. I've got the exact same one here for my uh, .com. Cannot buy these now. Nowhere online. They're all gone. They're all sold out everywhere. This. I've been trying to buy a spare. Can't do it. No. Yeah. Another thing I'd recommend, and this is not even tech related, it's so common sense that so many people don't do, get everyone to sign in 20 minutes before you go live so you can check everyone's connections and that there's not something weird behind them and you can hear them. The number of people that log on two minutes before you go live and then assume it will be fine, just don't. Yeah control over bandwidth use in the same home you're in if yep. your family jump on netflix while you're going live it doesn't yes. work yeah it just just yeah, i mean one of the things that, like because we in preparation for doing these sessions even before the first one the first one was just the sort of chat thing anyway so it didn't really matter um, but before the first one of these we literally had a session where four or five of us all dialed in and just messed around with zoom and checked how all the breakout rooms worked and like played with it and said oh can you see can you see if i type in here and this kind of thing uh, just to get used to how this technology works. Because if you want to use it and appear vaguely like you know what you're doing, it's kind of useful if you're not going, oh, does anyone know how I do this? Uh, in the middle of a meeting or a, yeah. a chat. It's, it's quite nice to play with things. And yeah, you can you can play with any of these tech setups and, and see what comes out and that kind of thing beforehand. But it's, uh, Zoe asked a question about mics, which is worth um, commenting on, because I've learned a couple of things the hard way. Uh, cheapest I'd say there's more stuff but um, if you buy it and this is a coming off Sam's theme and Trent's theme which is gaming equipment is meant to handle heavy duty graphics card consumption uh, and sound so gaming headsets are another thing in the gaming sort of list that are really good so a gaming headset which has got decent over ear comfy things with a built-in microphone has usually got a decent quality setup which is why Sam's is working well I hope the mic isn't too terrible on this it's not uh, audio file level quality of sound and you wouldn't use it for recording um music 
stuff in a studio uh, but it's pretty good for online meetings and a headset mic has the advantage that when you move around you don't change your distance from it and you can adjust it correctly that said the thing in the background here is a condenser mic jamie is using one that was a usb condenser mic is that right jamie yes yeah i had this um, for podcasting and i just used it now for zoom so the, there's a couple of things to bear in mind the condenser mics are they have a different sort of physical way of thinking they're expensive or they can be uh, but they give really good audio quality but one thing to watch out for is if you buy a usb one like jamie you can plug it straight into a computer great if you want to record other things that are not just computer things then if you buy one like this one it won't plug in your computer it'll plug in on an xlr cable uh, and you're going to need to buy an audio interface a box like this to to enter a whole new world of pain um, and mix audio as well as video but if you were going to go down the audio mixing thing that is the way you buy sound equipment like a microphone with an xlr cable and you have to buy another audio interface an audio card basically and and send that to your computer via usb but word of warning, a lot of people have bought a mic thinking, oh, I'll buy a decent mic, and it doesn't plug into their computer, and they haven't realized they need to buy more kit to make it talk. A good yeah. brand for the USB one, and I think it's what Jamie actually had, is there's a brand, brand called Blue and Yeti. There, there we go. They're, they're it's very like the affordable. podcaster's uh, <laughs> sort of hallmark, isn't it? Like, I've got Blue Yeti, I'm a pro podcaster. <laughs> they're for value for money they are the best usb mic by so far so if you want something under 100 quid that will do really good i would definitely get one of them i mean word of warning there is a, there is a world of pain to enter with audio and sound settings and if you're not going to use recording equipment on pro level a usb mic like like a decent one like james is probably the easiest solution by a long way yeah. I don't have I don't have mine to hand to show you, but it was just a little lapel mic that I got, and it I mean apart from on video chats where there seems to be some kind of background noise, um, it was it was fine. Mm. Um, yeah, was something think... else I was going to say that was really important. Oh yeah, um, Fran will be on next week, I believe, who will be able to to chat about all sorts of things about doing interactive stuff and and videos and stuff like that. But one of the biggest things that um i they were saying for producing videos but for the video chats as well i watched um jamie's recording of me doing one of his virtually social sessions earlier and realized just how poorly lit my living room is and when i was looking at myself on the screen when i was talking it wasn't wasn't an issue it was fine but watching it back like the lighting's a big thing um the lag on my video feed because of whatever was going on with my internet that day was huge so my mouth is not in sync with what i'm saying at all which is really annoying i don't know if anyone else gets annoyed by this but yeah just watching it back and you sort of go oh okay maybe i shouldn't shouldn't sit where i'm sitting and stuff i mean it's the one place in my house where i have an actually tidy background but it's the darkest room in the house you know it's it's that balance to mention lag actually because that's something we've not talked about is i don't know you might be able to do it in zoom um you but if you're going into like a bit of mixing software and you can definitely do it in the free version of obs if someone's got crappy internet and you notice they're starting to lag you can build um, a sync into the settings for that particular person's skype so you can add in and go can you factor in a one second delay on their video to their audio so your, the back end is catching up with their bad internet. That's really important if you've got a streaming setup where there is obviously a delay before other people see the output. Mm. Um, what I, I don't in Zoom, I can't see a, a lag setting. There is somewhere, although now I can't find it, somewhere where you can tell Zoom to use the original sound from your system. Um, there are two sound system settings which are really important. We haven't mentioned this. If you're sharing a screen in Zoom, there will be an option to also send your computer audio, which is a huge benefit if you want to share a video. Bad idea, probably. If you want to share a video, to send them to YouTube. But if you wanted to share something with sound and you expect them to be able to hear it, they won't unless you've ticked share computer sound. For example, Google Meet doesn't do that. Uh, there are ways around it, but they're a pain. Uh, the so on Zoom, when you click share a screen, um, you most of you can't do that because we've disabled screen sharing. Uh, but there's a button that says advanced sharing options. And when you click on that, 
Yeah, that you one? can you can choose to send music or computer sound only if yes. you just want to share the sound. But you can it's not also a tick. sharing options. It's just it's at the bottom. Yeah. Share screen. When I click share screen, there's then an advanced button on that, and it's portion of screen music or computer sound only or content from second camera. And one other thing, which this is the setting I can't find. If anyone else does find it, great. If you try and send sound. Um, from your computer or from your mic there is a setting somewhere in zoom which tells you to send the original sound without processing it because i think what zoom and many calls do is if it detects another noise particularly if you're not on a headset it will try and stop the echo by suppressing that noise because it's doing lots and lots of sound processing in the background and that might mess up what you want to send if you just want to send some music and it keeps getting muffled it's because zoom is doing something clever it thinks it's clever but there is a way to override that in zoom i just can't find the button and it's called share original sound yeah, I think in particular it's expecting, because you're doing a video call, which is a conversation, it's expecting a lot of the sound to be voice. Yeah. So if you play some music, it goes, oh, well, there's a person's voice. All the rest of this is clearly just background noise and just suppresses anything that's not the vocal line in the track. Uh, and I have, again, on uh, video chat, pub quiz replacements, uh, someone's tried to play a piece of music through and it's just come through completely garbled. Uh, because the the software is trying to be clever but yeah if you're going to share audio like that make sure you've tested it beforehand and it comes through okay um and and yeah if there are settings like that that you can send the, the unprocessed audio that's probably better for that kind of thing but probably a lot higher bandwidth maybe or... yeah and it looks i can't find the button now so maybe it's gone you need to enable the button in the settings so so i've got it i can turn on original sound but you need to go into the settings before the meeting and, and say enable this button so it's yeah. the host's responsibility yeah, to set that up yeah because yeah. Yeah, that involves yeah. the host knowing that that exists beforehand as well this is why these meetings are so useful there's so many settings that uh, are buried within other settings so thank I, you jamie that's a good tip most of my settings are completely locked down as much as i can do um, which tends to sort of come over for these meetings a little bit because i got zoom as a pro account to use for brownies and there's certain things you do not want seven to ten year old girls to have control over um <laughs> i mean the chat's funny not to enough. mention mass communicators yeah yeah are there any other questions that we've missed in um in the chat or just you want to jump on live while, while we're all still here i'm gonna to have to log off in a, in a couple of minutes but let's uh it's not you know when i go you, no one else has to go so yeah, well, I can, because um, I, I have on my list of things to do, uh, let everyone know about the other sessions that we're doing uh, for the rest of the, the thing, so I can do that quickly. Uh, and then we can, in theory, finish at half past, which is a good amount of time to finish. Um, so uh, we've got a session next week on making online maths interactive. So, uh, you know, videos are great and things that you sit and watch are fantastic, but um, it's also nice to get people involved in doing things as well. And I know Jamie does a little bit of this with kind of quizzes and things as part of his videos. Uh, but there are also uh, things like online interactive gadgets and stuff like that. So we've got uh, Philip who uh, has entirely single handedly built the website Mathigon, which I think has been mentioned already, which does lots of interactive uh, fun math gadgets for people to play with in, in a quite sort of educational way. So that's a really nice example. Uh, Christian Lawson Perfect, who I write on the periodical with. Uh, who has done lots of that kind of thing as well and also works for Newcastle Uni building a maths online uh, e-assessment platform called Numbers uh, which again presents a lot of maths unique challenges like how do you work out whether what someone's typed in is a correct answer if there are 18 different ways to rephrase that that are all about mathematically valid uh, so he's you know he can share a little bit of his experience with that and some of his online uh, gadgets that he's made and we're also going to have someone hopefully potentially talking about interacting with audiences in a more direct way so the, the sort of uh, Q&A type stuff that people have been doing for a while so things like I'm a scientist uh, does this kind of thing really well where people can send in questions for people to answer how can we build that kind of stuff into maths engagement to make it more interactive in a, in a sort of very two-way communication kind of way uh, the week after that, we'll be talking about online events. So the idea of taking an event, which would be a real world event and making it into an online one. Uh, so we've got Marika from Cheltenham Science Festival, who has basically had to do that uh, this summer. She's got an entire science festival that was going to be a real world thing, but is now going to be entirely online and how that's presented challenges. Uh, and from the math specific angle, we've got Katie Oldfield from Maths Week Scotland, who are running obviously an entire maths week, uh, which usually happens in, I think, September-ish. Maths Week Scotland, uh, what they're going to be doing for their online version. Uh, the week after that, we've got a thing about new skills, about upskilling. 
um, you know, how do we how do we learn new skills? What are some good resources for people to, to sort of transition to doing new things? Uh, obviously, this video session is one of those, but there'll be other skills as well that people will have picked up. Uh, and the week after that, we'll be talking about maths communication specifically in universities for people who would be doing maths outreach as part of their university. Hopefully, by that point, uh, I'm I'm going to say as a person who works in a uni, hopefully by that point we'll have done most of our marking, uh, or maybe there'll be some more marking to do. I don't know by then, but hopefully people have a bit more time to, to start thinking about doing uh, outreach stuff as part of their uni work as well. Um, and what we can do, in fact, as a, as a university maths department, what can we do that will be an online thing that's either unique or different to what other people are doing or just useful uh, in general. So we've got various guests coming in and I can't really say for the later ones because they're all still in the process of being confirmed. Uh, but the guests this time have been great, haven't they? Let's thank them. <laughs> Again, using either clapping or the reaction buttons or whatever you want. Um, thanks, Trent. Thanks, Kat, and thanks, Jamie. Is that a question from Nicholas? Uh, yes. Can I um, can I just very quickly show you my my little cheap document camera that I've yeah. been using with my my first year undergraduates? Um, so I um, I got this um, off off eBay. It was I think it's about. 40 quid new but this was 30 quid slightly second hand um, it's um, it, it's a hue HD portable um, camera and I've just been I've been using it for my sort of zoom tutorials with my my first year students at Warwick and um, I, I sort of have my my webcam on my laptop but also uh, I have this there's a document camera plugged in as well and I I can just sort of in theory switch over to um, to this and then I have a, a pad of paper and I I can sort of write um, nice right on that and it's uh, um, it's a fairly sort of if I switch back to um, so it's a fairly rudimentary sort of setup I have it um, just stood on top of a pile of books um, on the edge of my desk. Um, but it, it seems to be working okay so far. Um, yeah. and it's That's nice. I think, I think it's worth mentioning actually how strange it is almost ironic that mathematics is the last bastion of handwriting out there yeah. in that of all subjects. <laughs> It's hard to type, and even what Kat was demonstrating with uh, Equatio, and you can write in later, you can type maths, yeah, but actually doing maths feels almost dependent on some sort of writing implement. And so actually a simpler solution of a camera on your document yeah. is a really good way to keep that uh, mathematical sort of hands-on flavor alive. As a, as a left-hander, can I just say, it's a lot harder, because <laughs> you're basically <laughs> covering up what you're writing as you're writing it. Um, so I have to, if, as a left-hander, if I'm doing that, I have to write something and then take my hand away for a couple of minutes so you can see what I've just written. Oh, so, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, we did a few videos for, for the students in which I literally just put the webcam at the other side and filmed it from above, because uh, the other person who was doing it was also left-handed, and we filmed it from above and then just rotated the video, because <laughs> it was so much easier than having to take a hand away every time we wrote something. Uh, but yeah, there are, there are a few challenges with that as well. Um, Oh, what was I going to say? I was going to say something else about, yeah, uh, Blackboard Collaborate, which is the standard online uh, video lecturing software that our university makes us use, uh, to change cameras is 12 clicks. Literally, you have to go into the settings, change the thing, say that you've changed your camera, do something else, do that, and then you come back in and it's automatically muted your video and audio, so you then have to unmute that, choose the right camera input, yes, and then something else. It's literally 12 clicks. To if, you, if it makes you feel better in big blue button, which the AMSP uses and uses very well, don't get me wrong, uh, but to change the uh, audio or video source, you have to leave. You actually oh, wow. have to leave the meeting, which if your host is a problem, uh, you have to leave the meeting and then rejoin uh, and have to do the echo test and everything to get back mm -hmm. in. And then only then do you know whether anyone else is still left in the meeting. It's ridiculous. Well, this is what's forced me to use the ManyCam solution, which means I can switch cameras in that and then yeah. using the same input mm -hmm. into Blackboard. And this is um, what we're saying about being, being reliant on other people's systems. If you can control your feed with a mixing, then you have some flexibility. I'm going to have to log off. Carry on chatting, guys. Lovely to see everyone. Trent and Jamie still left in. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, Trent, I I'll be in touch sometime about, I think we're doing some mass inspiration with Matt and Rob. Yes, we are. But, um, we'll, we'll talk again sometime. I'll speak to you then. Yeah. I th I Thanks, think everyone. We wrap up there, I think, if, if people yeah. want to get off and do things. But thank you very much to everyone for coming. Hopefully see you at some of the other sessions. 
and uh, all the yeah. quiz tomorrow yeah go to sam's quiz tomorrow if you want to find out about that find sam on twitter and see what she's been tweeting she's doing a quiz and i'm doing the quiz next week she so is. That's going to be our Sunday show last on, week. Our Sunday show on shambles is a math special this week with Hannah Fry and someone else who I can't remember off the top of my head. And then Matt's on in a couple of weeks as well. Can you yeah. post the link in the chat, Trent? I can. Link. It's just the main web page. It's got them all listed on. Ah, oh, excellent. Yeah, I think the biggest thing I really want to learn how to do is learn how to use my camera on my phone as a camera. And get mm -hmm. my computer to to recognise that. Um, I also really want to learn how to do the the whole little person spotlighted with slides in the background thing on video chats. Yeah. Sam, can I just say I, I have, have to disappear. Thanks, guys. Loom that allows you to do that that somebody told me about, and I'm I downloaded it to have a go. I haven't tried it yet. Say that again, Frank. Trevor's There's talking software sometime. that allows you called Loom. L O O M that allows Excellent. you to keep your camera of you in the corner and other things to happen in the background. I don't know if it's any good, but I downloaded it to have a go. Lovely, so we, thank we you. We can add that to the document as well. We can yeah. put that in as a, as a thing because if, if there are sort of simple ones that aren't particularly high powered but are easy to use, that's probably good for a lot of people. Yeah, cool. Excellent. All right, Lovely. well, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, and, everyone. Uh, we'll see you next week, I guess, if, you, if you're around next week. And uh, yeah, please communicate. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, too. <laughs> <laughs>